welcome and a very good evening. And today on the Let's Code and Stars episode, I want to talk a little bit about video cards or graphics cards and how to determine which graphics card is actually in the machine that you're currently coding for. Because you have to know that the original IBM PC and everything that came after that up until perhaps the mid 90s or some other systems that I will talk very briefly about didn't have any way to identify hardware, basically. Uh, all the cards that you would put into the IBM PC or XT or AT were actually pretty dumb compared to, for example, uh, machines that came a little bit later, such as the Amiga, um, namely the Amiga 2000 and similar things, uh, which used a bus that had cards that would auto-identify them. Similar, the PS2 line of computers, the successor to the PC, basically by IBM, or boards, um, I think, with ISA, EISA slots. I think those also supported something more clever. And only when the PCI bus arrived in I think 1993, but it became only widespread in 1995, roughly thereabout. Um, the cards gained so much intelligence that they would um, announce themselves to the system and be identified. Resources would be allocated for them, like memory ranges, interrupts, DMA channels, and stuff like that. But this year, this is the CGA Redux um, color graphics adapter clone board. It's super dumb, basically. There are only a few bus transceivers and buffer chips on here that basically connect the whole um, card directly to the ISA bus down here. And um, the port that, for example, the Motorola 6845 appears on the bus is hard-coded in these chips. And there's a bit of RAM that's also hardwired into a certain memory location in the memory space of the PC, as well as the character ROM. Um, I'm not even sure that this is exposed to the bus, but it's definitely visible from the 6845. So how would you then determine that there's a CGA card in your system? And similarly, um, we have a Hercules monochrome display card clone, which was an enhancement over IBM's monochrome display adapter, which uh, was similar to the CGA, and these two also look a little bit similar, because both are based on the Motorola 6845. And the IBM MDA card could only display text, high-resolution text, nonetheless. Um, and the Hercules card, which we have here, or a clone of that, um, basically uh, added a high-res monochrome graphics mode on top of that. So um, we, you had two cards and you could even drive them at the same time. One color card, one monochrome card, both based on the same chip. And the question would be, how do you determine that either of those is installed in the system? because the system itself wouldn't be able to tell you because there was no API. And then along came the IBM EJ. In this case, this is a little bit later version um, made by Paradise, so a clone board again, which came with its own BIOS ROM, so executable code, because it had to run also in the original IBM PC or XT, which didn't even know about the EJA card because it didn't exist back then. So it would announce itself at least via the BIOS, um, which would appear in the space memory space for the option ROMs, and the regular BIOS would execute this, uh, and uh, or the other way around, I'm not sure. Maybe this would be executed first, and then the normal um, BIOS ROM would run. Uh, but either way, there was a mechanism to execute extra ROMs, which uh, the AGA card utilized. Again, how would you tell that an EJ card is in there? The existence of this ROM is one of the methods that you could do that, but we'll, we'll see that in a short while. 
and even later came the VGA standard. In this case, uh, we have a Tsang ET4000 Super VGA card. Again, it has some ROM chips here, which work similarly as the EGA ROM, and they would be executed right after the boot up, initialize the card, and yeah. Um, but both the VGA and the EGA card would be backwards compatible with the CGA card in a, in a matter of sense. And how would you be able to tell all these different cards apart? And this had to be done because people would have any of those cards. And you could combine always one monochrome card, that is mostly an MDA card or Hercules card, with one of the color cards, CGA, EGA or VGA. Uh, for actually for dual monitor uh, use, for example, playing games on the color monitor while doing business stuff and DOS stuff on the monochrome, or maybe even uh, what I did back in the day, develop some stuff on the color monitor and uh, the Turbo C or something IDE would run on the monochrome monitor, even under DOS where you don't have any multitasking uh, at all, but that way you could basically uh, debug a graphics application on the color card. Very fancy indeed. Um, and games like Zack McCracken or Maniac Mansion would auto detect which card was installed and choose the appropriate video mode, which is sort of like magic. Other games like uh, Space Quest, King's Quest from Sierra would have an install program where you had to choose manually which card to use. But um, we will learn now that they are actually relatively uh, decent ways to automatically identify which cards are installed in the system, also if there are two cards in the system. And yeah, I'll show you how to do that. One note, um, we will be using the Emulator 86 EMU because it is a very, very accurate PC emulator where you can choose from a wide variety of PC motherboards, CPU types and BIOS types and it's very accurate. Um, and I will pick this over the usual DOS box, uh, which I will still use for coding, um, because DOS box actually is a rather fast emulator and it doesn't emulate the hardware very well. For example, the 6845 chip on the Hercules or CJA card are not 100% and properly emulated so that we will get some issues there and uh, yeah our method of detecting this relies on the 6845 being there physically or in a very accurate emulation mode and DOSBox can't supply that. So the actual code has to run on a real PC or on the 86 EMU and DOSBox will fail somewhat if you set it to emulate CGA or Hercules only. Also I think the regular DOSBox can't emulate uh, dual screen, uh, color and monochrome. At least I didn't get it to work. Uh, but 86 EMU can do that without problem. Um, you will rarely want to run DOSBox in CGA or Hercules mode anyway, as, except if you have a program that needs Hercules, but then you don't need this automatic detection thing anyway. So yeah. Um, I think this is still very interesting because if you want to code for MS-DOS and want to automatically detect and choose video modes, uh, you will learn how to do that today. So let's have a look at how this works in program code. I have set up a little framework already here so that we don't spend too much time on the boring details. Uh, the program contains two files. One is the dosvideo.c file which contains the actual detection code. And the other one is called dosvideo.h and it has a few strings, uh, so we get a human readable answer, uh, which displays we have in the system, plus a few helper variables and a helper function to convert uh, some return values into the uh, strings that we have up here. So we'll ignore this for the time being, but it's there. Um, if you want to have a look, I will put everything up on GitHub and put a link in the video description. And the main program basically 
looks like this. We have a primary card and a secondary card. Those are just strings which are initialized with unknown and no display. Because for the primary card we just don't know what's in there and we assume that there's probably no display on the secondary card. Uh, then we clear the screen, which works in Turbo C like that. Um, and other C dialects won't have that function. This is specific to Turbo C. And then we say uh, to the screen, we're probing first for the VGA, then EGA, CGA, and HGC card, HGC being Hercules and uh, MDA cards. And we will differentiate between both of these. And why are we doing it like that? Because we're going from the new standard to the oldest, because actually the new standards like VGA have functions to determine which cards are installed in the system. And let's have a quick look on help PC library there is uh, the graphics interrupt, uh, which is the interrupt 10, and its subfunction 1a is called the video display combination. And you put um, 00, 0 in AL and 1a into AH, and this will give you the video display combination. You can also set the video display combination. But that doesn't make much sense, as you can't do that during runtime while the computer is up. And then you will get uh, these codes here uh, in BL and BH for the active and inactive display. That is what we are calling the primary and the secondary display. And um, this will be the codes that we are also seeing here. For example, uh, VGA with analog monochrome or color display. This is what you most likely will get is 08, and as you can see here, it's the same case. 0x08 is display VGA analog color, and which translates to this string here, which are basically just copied from this file here. So all we have to do is call the interrupt, and we already know how to do that more or less. We are setting up a union of registers. This is how you do that. In Turbo C, if you don't remember that, it's also in earlier um, Let's Code episodes. This is basically a structure, a collection of all the registers that the CPU has. And we can write to them like this. Rex X gives us all the 16-bit registers. And we are writing to the AX register the value 0x1a00, which is exactly the function that we are seeing here. We could have alternatively written um, it like this, rex.h ah equals uh, 0x1a and rex.h.al equals 0x00, uh, which is exactly the same, but um, the line above is only one line and this takes two lines. So I'm inclined to write it like this, because this is the AH register and this is the AL register inside of the accumulator register AX. Okay, so that's that. And um, while doing this, we can already call the interrupt, which is done by calling the function int 86, and you pass on the interrupt, which is the graphics interrupt 0x10, and you pass a pointer to the register structure called regs uh, for the input and output values. We can use the same structure here as we don't care about preserving what's there. And now, if on return um, we actually uh, get the same value back, uh, it says here, AL contains 1A if a valid function was requested in AH. Otherwise, this will be actually uh, be reset. So we can test that if rex HAL equals 0x1A. That means the BIOS did work and it did execute the function. So we can basically just take our primary um, card and set it to Whatever we got back, and we feed this to through the uh, VGA to string function that you can see here on the right, and the value for the primary card we remember here uh, will be in BL. So this is 
regs.h.bl. And the same thing we can do with the secondary card, secondary card, but this time it will be in bh. So anyway, uh, once we have the primary and secondary card from the VGA card, we actually don't need to check any other cards. So we have these uh, variables here that are set to 1 in this header file here to notify that we still need to test for that. And uh, we can actually set everything to 0 now because the VGA card actually can tell us uh, what cards are in the system. So that is pretty simple. One thing to note is if the active and inactive display that we get back was reported as uh, the MDA with monochrome display, it could still be the Hercules card, which means um, we test now if the uh, BL register equals 1 or the BH, so one of the cards that are in the system, is potentially an MDA card because the VGA won't test for any or can't, can't signal to us if it's a Hercules card. We will still do the Hercules test. This will give us a distinction between the MDA card and the Hercules card. Um, yeah. For the remainder of the tests, we will also rewire the pointer um, that we're using here, um, which is this one here, to point to the secondary card string. This is just so um, for the CGA card, we don't know, or for the 6845 based cards, we don't know if we're on the uh, primary or secondary card, and I'm using this pointer here and so I can swap around. Now with the EJ card everything is actually rather similar to the VGA card but there is a different function that we want to call and that is the function 12 hexadecimal on the video subsystem configuration and um, here we need to call the sub function 10 hexadecimal don't be confused by the missing H here this is actually the hexadecimal value. So rex.h.ah needs to be uh, 12 hexadecimal according to this and rex.h.bl needs to be 10 hexadecimal and then we can call the function as usual for interrupt 10 hexadecimal and the input and output registers. Now um, if there is no EGA card, the interrupt will just return and the BL will be loaded with the same thing that we put in there. So if rex.h.bl is still 0x10, then we know we can't have an EGA card and we will set EGA, the test variable for EGA to 0 and simply return. That's it. Otherwise, um, it is possible that, uh, or it's definitely the case that EJA has been found, and we just need to check uh, what the settings are basically, um, if it's a monochrome card or not, because if it's a monochrome card, uh, an EJA card on a monochrome display, we can't have another monochrome card in the system, as you remember, because uh, monochrome cards will always use the same memory, basically. And the interesting part here, the uh, CL register contains the actual switch settings on the EJ card if it has DIP switches or otherwise if it's um, wired up via a driver or a setup program. Um, I showed you the Paradise EJ card before and it had those switch settings and one of them is for actually setting the card to mono mode basically. So um, we're gonna introduce a new variable here called dips and the dip switch setting will be the CL register shifted to the right by one bit. Um, and very simply put, uh, you can 
look up the switch settings on one of the many websites that describe the EGA switch settings. But if the dip settings exactly equal 5, uh, which I think in binary should be, uh, there should be a 1. This is the 2, this is the 4 and the 8. Um, I think this should be this pattern. Yeah, if this is the case, then we actually are in the mono mode and we will set display EGA mono to the primary card. And then we can actually skip the test for the Hercules graphics card. But there could still be an EG, uh, CGA card in there, so we will still test that. Um, else, if the dip switch settings equals 3, which in binary should be the case if you have these switch settings. I think um, then the uh, color card, it's color card basically, um, primary card equals display EGA color on a CGA monitor actually. Um, and there can't be any more CGA cards. Hercules or NBA could still be there, so we leave that. And um, if none of those are the case, everything else should in theory be the EGA on a high-res monitor. And which means uh, there can't be another color card in there, so CGA again is being set to zero, so we don't test it. Hercules, etc. are still possible. And now the same goes here, um, because we don't, we have to know for the 6A45 based cards, so HGC, MDA and CGA, that we are now on the secondary card, we put the pointer again to this thing. It's just for storing the correct uh, information in the correct variable, basically. Okay, that's that. Um, now I've already prepared Three functions here. One is called test CJ, one is called test HGC, and both will be using the test 6845 function, which tests for the existence of a 6845 Motorola CRTC on a certain port. And how we do we do that, basically? Uh, we will need a bunch of um, variables, which we'll introduce shortly. But the very first thing that we have to do is um, we have to know a little bit about the CRTC uh, registers and most of the registers that we can try to identify are um, a bit tricky and could distort the image on the screen. But there's one particular register on the CRTC, namely register number 15 or hexadecimal F, which is the cursor low register, which um, I think sets the size of the cursor, uh, which we can simply write to without destroying too much things on, on the screen. And we can also reset it without any great disturbance. If there is a um, 6845, it will take this value and also give it back to us when reading from that port. So we're going to do that. And the way this works is um, we can write to the port in question the number of the register that we want to read or write, uh, which is f hexadecimal here. And then um, on the next port, one up basically, is the actual data port, where we uh, can read and write the actual register. Basically here you set the internal register address, then you go increment the address of this register. For example, on the CGA card, it's 3D4, and on 3D5, you can read and write the port, and the, the registers actually. So we're doing that. Then we are storing the old value that we had in here, um, so we can restore it after our experiments, basically. And then we're gonna, uh, again, write some arbitrary value. Um, here uh, the value could be anything. We're taking this one here. Um, 
and then we wait for a little while and TopoC doesn't have a proper function to do that so we are just gonna wait for a few microseconds by counting to thousand especially on a slow machine this will work quite fine and let's be honest any fast machine probably won't have a CGA or Hercules card inside um, yeah and then we read out the new value by uh, reading into from this port um, and then we are gonna oh, is that a good idea what I did here basically I need to do that that's better and then we're restoring the value that we had oh sorry out port byte port old value and we return true if the new value that we have read back exactly equals the sort of arbitrary value that we wrote into there. And we need a bunch of variables here, so uh, we need some iteration variable, the old value, the new value, and um, yeah, that's it, I think, yes, that should do it. So basically, select the register for the cursor low, increment the port, read that register, store some arbitrary value, um, read back after a short while this new value, hopefully, then restore the value and compare with the arbitrary value. And that gives us if the information if at that port there's actually a 6845. So for a... Um, CGA card, the test looks pretty simple. If test 6845 at port number 3D4, because that's where CGA cards always are and nowhere else basically in the system, then we can say primary card equals um, display CGA color. Uh, sorry because the CGA can only be the primary card and card equals secondary card for the HTC. Actually I think um, we should have a test here. I think it could also be... let's do it a little bit differently. Um, let's do... Uh, if card... let's take card equals the address of secondary card um, then we don't need to do that. Does it make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. Basically what we can do I think is just this here. I would say Let's try it like this. I think this should be more or less safe. Um, because we could have an EGA mono card and CJ as a secondary thing. I don't think I can configure it in MU86, but yeah, maybe this is a test case that we can't really do. But never mind. The um, Hercules card is a tiny bit more difficult. And I made one mistake here. It of course has to be asterisk card um, because we need to write into whatever card currently points to. And I think that should be fine. Um, okay, Hercules card is a little bit more difficult. However, the basic test is actually the same if test 6845 and now it's not 3D4 but 0x3B4 for the MDA and the Hercules card. Then we already know that um, whatever card we have is at least an MDA monochrome graphics card, okay? Um, however, this way we can't actually distinguish between MDA and Hercules. The Hercules has one feature that the MDA doesn't have. There is a status port at 3BA hexadecimal. So basically um, we will need to do something like import from 
0x3ba. Okay, here we have the um, information page for the 6845 CRTC controller and at 3ba or 3da we have the status register. And if we go to this one here, status bit 7 is unused on the MDA, but it will actually toggle during certain retraces. I think it might be the horizontal retrace instead of the vertical retrace um, on the Hercules card. Um, on the MDA card it's not used, on the Hercules card it is used. So we need to check if this bit actually is toggling. And this is only the case if we are on a Hercules card. So what we're doing now here is uh, take some kind of status value on this port and then we'll do a very long for loop as long as we can get with the 16-bit integer so something like 32,767 it's a very long loop on a slow machine at least and we'll um, read again the byte uh, here from the status and we will mask out the uh, seventh bit this is basically something like this so this is the seventh bit that we're masking out and if the value that we then get uh, actually we also need to do the same thing here if the value that we then get is not equal to the status value from above, then we know we have got the Hercules graphics card. So basically we can say, okay, card is display HTC mono, and we can return. That's it. So um, to recap, and we will very quickly test this out. Um, the VGA card can tell us exactly what's in the system via the interrupt 10 and the subroutine 1A. The EGA card can tell us that it's an EGA card and uh, with the subroutine 10 hexadecimal of the function 12 um, hexadecimal of the interrupt 10, it can tell us the BIP switch settings and it will tell us if it's mono or color or high resolution color card. And um, the CGA and Hercules and MDA cards we can test by testing for different ports um, on different ports for the existence of a 6845 CRTC controller by using the fact that it has certain registers on certain ports. And the Hercules card we can distinguish from the MDA card by testing for this toggling of the seventh bit in the status register, which doesn't happen on MDA cards, which is a peculiar peculiarity, basically. Okay, let's fire up MU6086 uh, and uh, test this. Okay, and the uh, application is actually called 86box. I can totally recommend this. Currently, we are set up for an 386DX with a primary card CGA and secondary card Hercules, uh, which you can see here on the left is a CGA and here's the uh, Hercules card. I'm not sure if I can enlarge the second one, seems to be a bug, but it doesn't matter, we don't want to display anything on there anyway. And I copied um, the file onto drive A um, and we can just call DOS video here and it will be probing all the things and it will say primary card is CGA with color display and secondary card Hercules with monochrome display, which is exactly correct. Uh, let's quickly reboot the machine and set it to VGA and Hercules as an example and we will also do only one display basically. Yeah, the um, BIOS will complain about this. Uh, we will have to save the BIOS information again because ATs will store if it's a color or monochrome display or VGA or CGA and they will complain if it's not correct. So again, running DOS video and again it works. Primary card VGA with analog color display and Hercules with monochrome display, which is pretty nice. Um, let's turn off the 
a Hercules card here and let's say switch to EGA. We haven't seen that yet. We are taking a vanilla e EGA card from IBM. The machine will reboot. The second monitor will be empty and it will not complain this time because EG and VGA are treated similarly by the BIOS and then running DOS video should hopefully give us EGA with color display. Oh, there's still the monochrome display. I didn't turn that off, it seems. Yeah, let's try, let's try and see if we can do that. We can even um, change the, uh, I think, let's quickly check, let's go out here. It says EGA with color display, so nominally not a EGA color, high color, high resolution color display. Let's switch to that. So we can configure here um, enhanced color. Oh, I think that's enhanced mode probably. Yeah, that should be enhanced mode. This should be the high res. And then we are doing none on the second video card, just to make sure. And yeah, this is already looking more high res. This is not CGA resolution um, running. The thing now should interpret the dip switches correctly. Primary card EGA with high res color display. There you have it. And this is basically how back in the day with IBM PCs you could identify which cards are basically graphics cards, especially are in your system, and how all these sysinfo programs did it. There are of course caveats if something is not 100% compatible or maybe some Hercules card doesn't implement this status bit 7, um, then you might misidentify things. So it's always a good option to give the user the option to override the video settings. Or for example, some people might want to play in CGA or EGA mode even if they have a VGA card for whatever reasons. But that's it, I think, um, for today. Check out 86box. It's a very nice, very accurate IBM PC and compatible emulator. Um, I will put up the code on GitHub and link to it in the video description. As always, uh, like, share and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below and I'm very grateful if you can support me in some fashion. Links to Patreon and all the other stuff are in the video description and if you can't do that that's also fine i hope to see you in the next video have a nice evening